Hello, folks. Welcome to This Week in History with Mike and Will. I am Mike. And I'm Will. And it's This Week in History, where Will looks up an event that happened in history on this week, and he has one hour to explain that event uh, to me. One hour. Yes. Now, this event is not an event per se. It's a person. <laughs> uh, the birth of Pyr- Pyrrhus? Pyrrhus? Pyrrhus. 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 Well, the birth of Pyrrhus. Pyrrhus. Uh, and then, uh, I guess, the rest of his life. Yeah. Which might be a, well, it'll be a trend for This Week in History. Yeah. We'll yeah. see how it goes. Maybe this year we'll be all people. Yeah, I'm kind of hoping to do like a, a character study series. Okay, well maybe that's this. I mean, we're we're on the roll this week and then next week. So I'll try you to still only going. got one hour I though. An hour. I get an hour. I gotta go fast for this guy. All right, so are you ready for the Beth Beth of birth? Birth, birth, <laughs> birth of, of Pyrrhus. Pyrrhus. Yeah, I'm ready. <laughs> All right, uh, so Pyrrhus of Epirus was born circa 319. BC, but I did find one source that said he was born October 8th, so that's why we picked it for this week in history, oh, okay. it's October 8th, so that's the event, and we're done. That's the fastest one I've done. Sure, sure. <laughs> but now we'll go into like the life of Pyrrhus, who he was. Now, Pyrrhus is born in the country of Epirus, which mm-hmm. is the western coast of Greece. It's like directly across the sea from like the heel of Italy. It's really close okay. to Italy. What is that sea? Is it the Aegean? I don't think that's the Aegean, and now I feel stupid that I don't know it, and I turned off my phone, so I can't look it up. Well, uh, tell you what, we'll put a picture of it here anyway. Maybe it'll be I actually have an event that takes place on the other side of it, so I, w- I needed that anyway. All right. Uh, but anyway, so he was born in Epirus to, it's uh, a tricky pronunciation, Aesides. It's A-E-A-C-I-D-E-S. Aesides, I think it's A. Uh, and uh, Pythia. P-H-T-H-I-A. Four consonants in a row is rude. <laughs> so I just call her Pythia. Mm-hmm. I think it's Phthia, or, but it probably has a little bit of a pronunciation to it. Yeah. Now, Isides is a cousin of Olympias, oh. who we talked about last week. She is Alexander the Great's mom. Huh. So that makes him like a second cousin of... I think it technically is a second cousin of Alexander. What it for sure does is it makes Pyrrhus a second cousin of Alexander the Great. Okay. Cool. Uh, which is awesome. He's a contemporary of the greatest general sure. possibly in history. Well, at least one of them. Do they know each other? Um, I don't believe so because Alexander was off doing his thing. Right. And uh, we'll, But we'll get into that. And Pyrrhus was um, being born. Correct. So uh, his name means red-haired or flame-colored. Mm. So he might be a redhead. He might be. That would be interesting. It's, there are a few uh, Greeks that were sure. redheaded. Uh, it'd be strange to name him that if he wasn't. That would be. Uh, it would be really weird. Yeah. But as far as like the shade goes, who knows? Fire can be a lot of different colors. I'm gonna start calling you. Gold. I'm gonna start calling you redhead. All right, sounds good. Hey, redhead. <laughs> I like it. Okay. I like it. Call me Pyrrhus. Perfect. <laughs> sounds great. Uh, <clears throat> now, uh, Isides was a prince of Epirus. His dad was one of the kings. In this time, uh, it was common for some uh, Greek kingdoms to have two kings rule at the same time. Oh. Kind of like how the Romans had the consuls. Mm, okay. um, a backup king. Yeah, it was kind of like a backup king. They're supposed to rule equally, but sometimes there were as a oh, uh, yeah. <laughs> force of personality. That guy was better suited. Sometimes one was better suited for war. One was better mm. suited for peace. Um there were times where they didn't get on at all. This is my at-home king. Yep. This is one of my traveling kings. Well, the Spartans did that a lot. Sure. They would have the, when we go to war, you lead the army, and I'll stay back. But sometimes they would switch over with, like, yeah. alternative kings. Like so, like, uh, Leonidas, the famous uh, Spartan 300 guy, uh, he was one of two kings at the same time. And he went off to war, and then his co-king stayed back. Okay. Um, at the time, he's considered the greater warrior, so that might have been why they sent him. Sure. But in this case... Um, so Isidae's dad uh, dies, uh, and his son takes over. Isidae's yep. is now in charge. How it goes. N- now, this is after Alexander is out of the picture. Okay. Okay. Uh, and Isidae's is dealing with the fallout of that. Oh, no. Uh, they called it uh, the Diodici. It's D I. A D O C H I. It's Diodoci is how it's kind of spelled. But these are the guys that were the loyal servants of Alexander, and then after he died, it just turned into like a free for all. Yeah. So it's, it's the power of vacuum. That happens all the time. It does. So they also call this the right war. Right away, folks. Yeah. 
This also is called the uh, War of the Successors. Mm. Uh, now, one of the major guys is Cassander. He's a very belligerent Macedonian warlord who basically wants to take over Alexander's original kingdom that he started with. Not so. like those nice, reasonable warlords. Yeah. I mean, some warlords have, like, a cause. Sure, some I guess. Do. Yeah, but now, yeah, this guy was this guy was disliked. No one's called a warlord, and they're like, he's a really charming he's guy, though. Nice guy. <laughs> he's just like, quiet. You could be a charming warlord, <laughs> but you're also a killer. <laughs> yeah. That's, like, that's right. a requirement. Like, I'm sure Julius Caesar was charming, okay. but the dude was a warlord. <laughs> like, uh... Genghis Khan was probably very charming when he wanted to be, until he, you know, sent you off to the White Mountain and mm. made a mountain of skulls out of you. Uh, anyway, uh, Cassander was uh, one of the belligerents. He was one of the, the leading fighter types. Yeah. And he ran afoul of Olympias, Alexander's mom. Oh. She wanted him out of Macedonia. She did not like him. Out. She, she was, he was causing problems for her. So she called in her cousin, um... Icy Days, and he shows up. Icy Days? Icy Days, Icy Days, Icy Days? I think it's Icy Days. Icy Days. It's when, like when it gets really cold. Yeah, Icy that's days. what I thought. Icy Days shows up with an army uh, and helps fight. Yeah. Temporarily drives off Cassander. Has to come back. But the second time, his guys are not fond of the idea of marching out of their country to fight for a foreign queen for something that they don't want to fight in. Typically... That's not great. And this is a time period where, like, the rule of you have to do whatever the government tells you to do as a soldier, so you do it. Yeah. That's not how Greeks work. Oh. So his soldiers mutiny and go home. Well, I would think at any point you have to sell a war. Yeah. And he Somehow. wasn't apparently a great salesman. <laughs> because his army said, nope, we're out. And by the time he got to Macedonia, his army was mostly gone. He had some guys, but it wasn't enough to do anything. So he goes home. But by the time he gets back, the army that returned were done with him. So they dethroned him. <laughs> You're not the king anymore. And they kick him out. Rough. Yeah. So, I see days is like, I don't have my kingdom. And these people will probably he try to kill failed. me. double He tried to get more, and he lost yeah. what he even had. This is what him. you get for trying to help family. Mm, yeah. <laughs> uh, so he goes into, like, hiding. He has to run off. He takes his family with him. You know, he's got to protect That's his fun. wife. That kids. sounds like a little fun family it's vacation. It's a little vacation. <laughs> Follow cool. me, kids. Don't look back. <laughs> don't you stray behind. Like, don't get less behind because we're Whee! not coming back for you. What fun. But isn't this fun? <laughs> They're swinging the kids and the city's burning behind them. <laughs> There's soldiers slowly trying to catch up. I'm like, oh, just keep going, kids. Just keep going. Keep going. Keep going. <laughs> Uh, they eventually settle in Illyria, which is a nearby kingdom. Uh, it seems like it's a bit of a rougher country because these guys get referred to as barbarians a few times by fellow Greeks. Like, they're considered more coarse. Okay. Um, so uh, they wouldn't be nomadic, but uh, their concept of, like, civility might be not be as established as what Maybe some of the other Greeks are. Barbaric, a little more barbaric, a little rougher, a little sure. rougher. Yeah. Um, Really, that's probably all it is, is they just don't build giant palaces. Mm. But, yeah. you know, if, if a culture is different than yours, you tend to disparage it, and that's, that's what true. ends up happening a little bit later. Uh, but they become uh, kind of protected by the king of these Illyrians. His name is uh, Glaucius. Glaucius? And Glaucius is, uh, he's a renowned fighter, uh, king, and he's the leader of these people. And he, he takes them in and is like, okay, well, I'll, I'll help you guys out. Nice guy. Sure, so I was like a nice guy. Doesn't turn out to be a not nice guy. Oh. Rare instance of just stays being a pretty nice guy. Weird lack of spoilers. Now, I'm I'm sure that there's a selfish motivation. Surely. You help another king yeah. in exile, then when he comes back yeah. as king, then you, you, you know. Surely. You get some money, you get a little bit of aid, or a trade yeah. partner, or something like that. Yeah, something. Um, a card. Something. You know, maybe a feast. Perhaps a dinner. Something nice. Go to coffee sometime. Yep. Um, now, Glaucus is a good host, mm -hmm. and while he's doing this, uh, uh, Isides is, is, is trying to basically get his kingdom back. Okay. So Cassander doesn't, <coughs> Cassander's bouncing around doing stuff, he's kind of a main problem. During all of this, who's Cassander? Is, Cass was, Cassander was, was one of the uh, uh, just a guy, Diotic, uh, the Diotici. Okay, we don't guys. know his family. He was just a guy. We're just he's he's a one of the guys vying yeah. for Alexander's throne. Um, I'm sure he's more than just a guy, right? Yeah, he's a king. 
Okay. But he's, yeah, he's, he's, so he's causing problems, but he's mostly out in Asia now. Okay. Um, but it seems like uh, the guys who replaced AC Days are kind of pro Cassander. Mm. So that's like, if, if Cassander's a threat, those guys are a threat, yeah, and yeah. vice versa. Uh, but AC Days gets some troops together and he goes back. He fights two battles and loses them both. And in the second battle, he's badly wounded and he succumbs to his wounds, wounds and he oh. dies. So. Epirus. We barely knew ye. Yep. <laughs> Epirus is 11 at this time. Hey. And Glaucus is like, you know what? I liked your dad, and I see an opportunity for everybody involved. Let's go put you on your throne. Oh. So he marches an army into Epirus with Pyrrhus. Gets tricky with that. Yeah, I'm sorry. You had said earlier... Epirus is not 11. You meant Pyrrhus is 11. Pyrrhus is 11. Sorry. Pyrrhus 11. Epirus is the country. You go into the city. Yes. It right. doesn't help when I stutter and I go, eh, Pyrrhus. Yeah, okay. <laughs> that yeah, doesn't good. help at all. all right. I will try to be more clear. So, <laughs> yes. Uh, so, Pyrrhus is 11 at this point. Yeah. So, he's he's not considered, like, king level yet. Sure. He's, he's Crown right. barely fits. Doesn't. Yep. It just kind of, it's a necklace. Yep. It's a big <laughs> necklace. Um, so, Glaucius is his protector. He's mm-hmm. going to have a vested interest in whatever's going on in the kingdom. I don't... From what I was reading, he's not he's not in charge. He's got his own kingdom to run. Okay. But he probably, he, he's going to have people around this kid that are going to hook him up. Once again, Glaucius up. being the good guy. Being the good guy. Yeah. Now, Glaucius puts him on the throne, mm-hmm. sets him up so that he has good advisors, probably puts some soldiers around him to protect him because yeah. he's just out of rebellion. And he's 11. Uh, and then Glaucius goes home. Bye, kid. <laughs> good luck. And, have fun yep. running the castle. Now, Pyrrhus seems to do well for six years. For six years, uh, he's he's running the kingdom, wow. either through administrators Man, all and through advisors. His, all through his middle school era. Yep, he's <laughs> running a kingdom. At some you point... You thought your middle school at time was tough. <laughs> Try running a kingdom. Try running a kingdom, but only hey, kind of. Hey, like, everyone, stop picking <laughs> on me and the don't king. Don't fight! <laughs> <laughs> Mom, why do I have weird chest hair? Dad never told me about it because he died. Get back on the throne. Oh, okay. <laughs> There's a girl. <laughs> I don't know what to say to her. Do I tell her I like her? Can I tell her I'm the king? My armor fits funny. It doesn't work. <laughs> I don't like this. Anyway. So now that's that's going to be Pyrrhus for <laughs> Sorry, the rest Pyrrhus. of this. Just Sorry. For, the, for the time Just he was Just for the time being. For the time being. He's now, 17 now. He's a man. Yeah, at 17, uh, he goes to visit basically Uncle Glaucius, his his family friend, yeah. who's having a wedding for one of his sons. This is a big event, so kings are supposed to go visit. Yeah. When he goes to visit Glaucius, the rebels take over his throne again. Yeah, you can't leave for a <laughs> second. He just leaves for like five seconds, and Glaucius is to go to visit his family friend who's like saved his family multiple times, and he loses his throne. This time, Glaucius can't come running just, with an... He's I'm, like, I've... I'm in I the middle of a wedding. Guys, I've helped you guys so many times. <laughs> yep. I can't. No, I can't. Well, I, just can't I just You're done. All right, I fine. just. <laughs> I just can't. I'm sorry, kid. Right. Makes sense. But Pyrrhus is now at an age where he can start doing things on his own. He's an adult. Mm. He's 17. 17. That's old enough old to enough. make babies and kill people. That's the most important thing at this time period. Can you make babies? Can you kill people? I suppose also farming. It's one of the like you get. Yeah. Can you a trade. Can you create... <laughs> it's, you make babies. Take, create and take life. Yeah, can you create and take life, and then you need some kind of trade. Okay. <laughs> whether that's kingship, it could be whether making, that's farming, whether that's life. pottery. <laughs> mm-hmm. It can be taking life. Soldiering. Mm-hmm. And soldiering is very... Con- like, being a mercenary in Greece is a totally legitimate job. Mm-hmm. Like, that's a huge thing. There are military detachments that go around. And everybody's fighting everybody. The successors don't show, like, any sign of stopping. They're all cutting out little territories for themselves. Well, little compared to Alexander's empire, huge swaths of land for everybody else. Like Egypt, oh, this yeah. is when Egypt becomes like a Greek country. So we have Ptolemy becoming his own king. Uh, Cleopatra is like great, 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 great grandfather. Okay. So he's the guy who followed, founded that whole, like, remember there were like 17 Ptolemies or yeah, whatever? Yeah. He's the first one. Good so name. that guy's running things at this time, too. He's a contemporary. Okay. Uh, so. Off goes Pyrrhus to become a soldier. Mm-hmm. Uh, he enlists in the army of his uh, brother-in-law. His sister got married off to a guy named Demetrius. Demetrius is uh, the son of a king. Uh, he's uh, uh, from Thessaly, which is another 
chunk of like another kingdom. Sure. Uh, he is well respected, good general, and uh, his dad is one of the Diodiki. He's one of the successor guys. So the guys who want to be king. Yes, these are the. They're part of the. Uh, I think it's kind of, uh, the Antigonines or the Antigonines. So Antigone. Okay. That yeah. name. Uh, this guy's name is Antigonus. Okay. <laughs> so the the Antigone family. The uh, they are important for the rest of our story. Okay. Um, Antigone. That's a. Uh, that's a. Uh, is that the first Greek tragedy story? I think it is. It's up there. In, it's one. If it's not the, the first, ones. it's a really you know, early the one. Gouge eyes out thing. I'm thinking number one. You are thinking of Oedipus, uh, Oedipus where the eye gouge. I mean, there are probably multiple. Stories. I think something terrible happens in Antigone as well, but something awful. I don't remember it all. Usually does. There's Antigone. I think there's like Medea is one of the early ones. Yeah, yeah. Um, all right. But that's not what the story is about, anyway. But, so we'll look up, about. I guess, but the name is important because this family name is based on sure. Antigonus. Uh, Antigonus is fighting Cassander. Yeah. Doesn't like him. Doesn't. So this is probably why Pyrrhus is like, oh yeah, I want in on that. I hate that guy. <laughs> because he got my daddy <laughs> killed. Mm. Like this, He's the cause of some family issues. Um, now... So he's not put in like a special position, really. Like he's given like a leadership spot because he's he's a noble, yeah. but he's not given more than he can handle. No, yeah. because also because he's a kid. Still. Yeah, he's a welcome kid. to the army, kid. Yep. Uh, yeah, you're in the army, sure, sure. Yeah, good luck. <laughs> uh, now these guys are getting ready for a kind of a climactic battle. Uh, it is the Battle of Ipsus, which probably deserves Ooh. its own episode. Okay. Um, but it's a pretty big deal, and it's considered like the largest and most decisive battle of the War of the Successors. Oh. Do you know when that ha- takes place in? Um, I mean, the week. I think I, I should look up the week. Mm, okay. Um, yeah. This is like in the let's see, I think it's in like three hundred one or three hundred two BC. Yeah, okay. I can look it up. Um, I was just wondering if we should have it be its own thing. I, I'm going to look it up. I'll, okay. I'll look it up because it's a good one. Um, and this kind of this this alters like the literal landscape of the world. Like it it creates deciding lines of territory oh, okay. and who goes where and who does what. Um, unfortunately, Antigonus does not win this war. No. Oh. Uh, Antigonus how, is how badly in, does he lose? <laughs> he, 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 it's ultimately. Oh. He, oh. <laughs> Antigonus. Oh. So uh, Demetrius is given the right flank, which is like position of honor. Yep. Um, and he and Pyrrhus are like side by side fighting. <laughs> Apparently, it's it's listed a couple of times now. Our main sources for this are Cassius Dio and Plutarch, who are like early AD people. So that's like the earliest. Oh, information. So yeah. three hundred so, years later. So yeah, hundreds of years later. Uh, there's also. We should write some of this down. There's also Dionysius of uh, Dionysius. Dionysius. Dionysius oh. of. Uh, I can't remember where he's. Dionysius off. is the god of parties. Wine. Yep. 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 He's a good one to hang out oh. with. Um, <laughs> so our sources, some of them are a little different on who sure. did what and what happened where, yeah. but apparently. He fought really, really valiantly and, like, bravely uh, to the point where uh, Demetrius said he's going to be an amazing general if he lives long enough. Because <laughs> I imagine he's running out and killing people like, yeah. okay, you're really good at this, but you're a little over eager and you're going to end up dead. This is Pyrrhus? Pyrrhus is doing yeah, this. Right. Pyrrhus is charging off like a madman. Now and he ended up living. And he, he does live. Not like the he other guy. He does live. Okay. Uh, so does Demetrius. But Demetrius' dad who's one of the successors, yeah. dies. Unfortunate, but Demetrius now, he's like, oh, okay, this isn't good. But his flank of the battle wins their ba- side. Uh, but see, typically the battle is, you know, there's three chunks. There's yeah. the left, the center, and the right. Yeah. Well, when you're left and defense, your center lost. Defense, offense, and special teams. <laughs> yeah, so special teams did really well. Okay, good. <laughs> but you can't, but win, you can't, you can't win, win the game with that. I mean, I think you can win with special teams. I don't know. Teams. I'm not a, I, I think have, that's a thing. I shouldn't have brought the football I, metaphor in. I think in. you can. I'm weak enough. On the Isn't that like field goals? I've done my entire knowledge. Okay, <laughs> that's it. That's, yeah, we're plumbing the depths of it. I feel like we should know more because Green Bay. But anyway... Uh, so they they really do well on their flank. They blast through, and then they kind of look around and go, 
Dad's dead. Ooh. The rest of the army is basically annihilated and has lost the war. Yeah. We're going home. Well, this has been fun, but yep. we have to go. <laughs> so they take their troops and they withdraw back to Thessaly, where they're mm-hmm. from. Okay. Um, that's not considered dishonorable because the alternative is they stand there and they die. <coughs> yeah, well, sometimes or they get gotta, captured yeah. and sold. A into, tactical it, retreat. It is. <laughs> it's and it, it 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 does a really, you know, they do a really good job of getting home. Uh, such a good job, in fact, that it allows them to sue for peace and make a treaty. Oh, okay. They end up making a, a peace treaty with King Ptolemy in Egypt, mm-hmm. uh, who's part of these wars. Yeah. Part of the treaty oftentimes is to offer up hostages. Sure. You can't just... Uh, hostages yeah. at this time are not like, you know, anybody enters and the, the hostage gets it. It's much more polite than that. The yeah. hostages usually live well. Okay. They, uh, like prisoner of war, pris- if you were? I mean, it, I mean, we're talking like if it's a noble, so- they live in a palace. Okay. Which is what happens to Pyrrhus. Okay. For some reason, Pyrrhus is requested as the hostage, probably because he's the son of a king and the heir to a throne. Um, he did well enough so that he's like a soldier of station. Okay. Um, and he's close to Demetrius. I feel like Pyrrhus kind of resents this. So remember this. Okay. He's probably not happy being used as a bargaining well, chip. Yeah, well, who would he be? He probably doesn't have any say in it, though. Yeah. Because he's, you know, a king without a kingdom, and his closest family members just sold him, you know, down the river, yeah. basically. Thanks, fam. Good job. Uh, <laughs> fortunately for him, though, Ptolemy's a pretty cool dude. Okay. Uh, Ptolemy likes him, he respects him, and he allows him to marry his stepdaughter. Hey! Now, his stepdaughter Win-win. is... Uh, Tied to like Macedonian royalty, okay. So she's that's good marriage yeah, right. material for him. Sure, like good job. But for is him. she nice? Um, I think so. He winds up with a second wife. That doesn't oh. mean that things didn't go well with the first wife. He might have had multiple wives. Okay, uh, that was not uncommon. Uh, like Philip of Macedon had multiple wives. Might have been why he got killed though. <laughs> okay. Alexander had multiple wives at the same time. Not how he died. Okay. So see, it works out differently. Either way, when picking your multiple wires, be careful. Be very careful, as he'll learn. Okay. <laughs> I didn't even know that was a spoiler. That's a spoiler. 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 It, yeah, I'll careful. say the same thing later. Yep. Be careful. Got it. You know, don't do it. Yeah. I mean, make sure everything's copacetic sure, with everybody sure. involved. It's Co-pacetic trucky. Copacetic adults, whatever. It's but trucky. It's trucky. Don't it's trucky. do it. It's trucky. It's trucky to rock around, to rock around. It's trucky. Right? That's the song? Yep. Yep. Okay. From Run GMC. <laughs> Run GMC. It's just a. Right. It's a car that won't start. <laughs> uh, uh, originally, please run GMC. <laughs> Go on. I'm moving right along. <laughs> uh, so uh, yeah, Pyrrhus is doing all right. Mm-hmm. He's married to Ptolemy's stepdaughter. Yep. Good stuff happens. Uh, and then in two nine, so this was in two ninety eight where he gets sent off as a hostage. Yes. So he is sent off to be a hostage. He gets sent off okay. to be a hostage. Yeah. So he's like hey. he's still young. Hey, I'm <laughs> here to be a hostage. Hi. I'm oh, a oh host- we've been expecting you come I'm a hostage. <laughs> Crap. I got to uh, marry an Egyptian woman. Well, now he's this. now he's he's his his voice is yeah. is coming. Surely he's yeah, a he's, yeah, he's doing well now. Uh, <laughs> cuz he is now uh, 21, I think. Um, he can finally drink. So he can drink. Have Although, I feel like in the, I think in the Greek world, you just drank. Yeah. Like it's... The wine flowed in the rivers. <laughs> <laughs> it's it's bad enough, then they're just like, you know what? Let him drink, dude. Just, just, just let him drink. Uh, so, in 297, so a year later, Cassander dies. Just, I, didn't, I didn't look up how. No, just, might have been right. battle. Might have no, been yeah. age. Might have been poison. Okay. There's a lot of that going around. Could have, yeah. Right. I hear it's catching this year. Po- poison? <laughs> poison. Poison's yeah. catching a lot. <laughs> uh, it seemed a very popular thing. Could have been dynastic struggle. Could have been murder. Could have been, yeah. I didn't look it up. Okay. Uh, what I did know is that he's dead now, and that's a good thing for, like, everybody. Except? Except Cassandra. Cassandra. And maybe his fan. Sure. Uh, and his but friends. Ptolemy sees this as an opportunity. Mm-hmm. He can make a, a strong ally, an even stronger ally, oh. by giving Pyrrhus his old kingdom back. Because oh. he has the power to do this. 
Okay. So he collects a bunch, he gets some money together, he gets some soldiers together, and he sends Pyrrhus off with his best wishes and his stepdaughter to go reclaim his kingdom. Pyrrhus gets there and realizes probably the best way to come back as king is not to kill a bunch of your people. I mean, it makes a splashy entrance. It does. <laughs> it, it literally splashy. Blood yeah. everywhere. But he decides uh, he'll talk to the current king, who I think his name is uh, Lycomedes, uh, and says, well, let's go to the co-rulership thing. We were going to eventually maybe, we were going to be co-rulers anyway. Yeah. Let's do that. Because <laughs> the other option. The other option is war. <laughs> this lasts for like a day. Ah. Uh, Apparently, this king is not popular with any of the nobles. Mm, okay. Pyrrhus doesn't like him, but. so Pyrrhus, they start scheming immediately. Okay. Pyrrhus calls him to dinner hey. and has him murdered. Hey. With zero consequences. Ooh. A world where murder has zero consequences. So, from 298 forward, Pyrrhus is the sole ruler of the kingdom of Epirus. Good job, Pyrrhus. He did try for 24 hours to not. <laughs> yep, I tried really hard to not be. I tried to not kill But, yeah, it's within the same year of him going off and being in charge that yeah. he just is like, nope, I'm done with this crap, okay. and kills him. <laughs> um, not sure how. It just says murdered. Usually it would say poison, so I think it was a, like, a knifing situation. <laughs> like, a bunch of guys set on him and just murdered him. Okay. Um, it's very unpleasant. No, he's king. Yay for Pyrrhus. Yay. I, I still don't know if he's the good guy or the bad guy in this. Yes. Yeah. Oh, it, was, uh, it wasn't it uh, uh, was like Amidas. It was uh, Neoptolemus. The reason I wrote that down is because uh, Neoptolemus is the same name as Achilles' son from the, the Trojan War stories. Mm, but it's not guy. super important. But uh, what is interesting to me, though, the reason I wrote that is because Neoptolemus in the stories is red-haired. Oh. And then he's Pyrrhus is tied to it. It's very interesting how Greek stories tie together with some of their history. Mm -hmm. Okay, it's interesting. Um, and then with Alexander being so obsessed with Achilles and uh, Patroclus and all of that story, having this red-haired general guy show up at a, like the same time, pretty cool. Uh, so Pyrrhus is now ruling. He's the sole ruler of Epirus. Uh, Good for him. And he immediately decides he's going to be a warrior king. Why not? Why not? <laughs> it was Why fun. not? What else is there to do? <laughs> Plus, yeah. he's, he's his, his second cousin like almost conquered the world. If he hadn't oh, died... Oh, he was so close. I could do it. Yeah. I could do he's the like, thing. well, I can, do, I can fight. I'm a good general. I'm a good soldier. Yeah. I'm going to do it. And the first person he attacks is Demetrius, the guy who sold him off as a hostage. Well... Yeah. That's fine. So Demetrius is fighting in Thebes. Thebes is a remo uh, remarkably fortified city. It, it, there have been a lot of people who have tried to take it, who have taken it, who have had battles for it. It's part of Greek mythology. Uh, it's, it's very famous. Is there an oracle there? I think there is an oracle I in think Thebes. there is. Um, it might have killed an oracle at Thebes as well. I'm sure they have an oracle in every Lots city. Lots of oracles. <laughs> um, but yeah, so Thebes was... Consult besieged. your local oracle if you have any questions. <laughs> and Pyrrhus sees this as an opportunity to take Thessaly. The king is gone with his army. Okay. Oh, yeah. So in marches Pyrrhus. War is fun. With his army. Yeah. Well, obviously if you're a king, you're going to hear about your kingdom getting invaded. Yeah, it's been and it's a large body of foot soldiers walking towards your kingdom. So he stops his siege and walks back, and Pyrrhus goes, ooh, that's a lot of guys, and goes home. <laughs> war is not as fun. <laughs> war like this for like six years. Oh, no, no, no. I don't think he's doing war right. For eight years, they go back and forth. I counted no less than six invasions and counter invasions. Okay. So Pyrrhus goes into Thessaly. Demetrius count, like goes to meet him. Pyrrhus goes home. He, uh, Demetrius marches into Epirus. And then, while he's doing that, Pyrrhus marches into Thessaly, and they take separate roads, so they cross each other, like, in the night, and just start raiding each other's kingdoms. Great. Thessaly's richer, so Demetrius comes back, and then Pyrrhus goes home. <laughs> They're all stuck with They're all stu the jewelry now, they, that doesn't fit them. He manages to have a, a battle during this with... Uh, Demetrius is like second hand guy or uh, second in command guy, not second hand guy. He's his most trusted general. You are my and number one you guy. Are my number one. Guy. Uh, so Pyrrhus uh, has he, he gets a, a big win under his belt. He fights an army of eleven thousand men with his twenty thousand, so it's, he's got an advantage. 
Uh, apparently the battle was really, really fierce, and Pyrrhus was able to get a win, uh, captures 5,000 of the enemy, and then m marches back towards Thessaly. Like, all right, fine, we're going to follow up this win. And Demetrius is, like, marching towards him, and Pyrrhus is like, I need to go faster, so he, like, frees the, the prisoners. They have another battle. This goes on and on and on and on and on. These guys just, they, they make peace, and then they break it, and then they make peace, and then they break it. They wind up having, like, a fight over here, so then this guy goes to fight him, and it's it's just I'm utter sure, chaos. I'm sure this is great fun for the standard oh, army the people. They're people just, love it, yeah. Oh, we're doing another battle? All yeah. right, yeah. let's go. They're, they're really, really <laughs> happy about it. Um, by the time he's done with all of this warring, and, like, Demetrius winds up fighting off against, like, Cassander's family and coming back and dealing with all this nonsense... Uh, eventually, though, Pyrrhus is able to get a total win. Uh, Finally. He winds up being king of Thessaly. Hey. Or Thessaly, not Thessaly. That's Sicily. Right. That shows up later as well. Okay. Uh, so he rules over Thessaly. And then um, he's also able to get alliances with other kings. And one of them is the king of Macedon. And he helps that guy, like, take control of Macedon. And then he's given half of the kingdom as, like, co-ruler as well. So he gets basically half of Macedon, all of Thessaly, and then also owns his kingdom, his yeah. own kingdom. So this is like the height of his, his power. He owns a big chunk of Greece. He's doing very, very well for himself. All these places are not named these things anymore, are they? Um, Some of the cities are, I guess. The but. cities are, and I think a lot of these kingdoms are regions now. So like Macedonia oh, is okay. like a region of Greece. It's like a province okay. kind of a thing. Um, some of the smaller, like the island kingdoms still have like their same name, like Lesbos, uh, Crete. Crete. Uh, those have their names. Minos, I think, is still its own thing. Um, anyway. So, yeah. Um, it, uh, unfortunately, though, because he's kind of in the Ascendant, the other kings at this time keep going, okay, well, we don't want anybody becoming too powerful. Uh, so there's a little bit of a scheme where uh, Ptolemy becomes allies with the king of Macedon, and they basically unite to kick Pyrrhus out of Macedon. Mm. Like, they raise an army, and he's like, uh, you know what? I don't want to rule this stupid kingdom with you. I'm going back to Epirus, and I'm just going to stay there. Yeah. And he does. You show him. Um, now, by now, he's he's built up his reputation as a general. He's, yes. He's, I mean, yeah, it's kind of weird, because like a lot of his fights, is just maneuvering. Yeah, not a lot of wins on that scoreboard. Right, there. like when he fights, he wins, but mm -hmm. he also dodges a lot of battles. Like, so the, if you've never if if you've never fought the battle, you technically don't lose. Okay. It's yeah. all at this point. Like a lot of it is just maneuvering. Yeah, okay. But when he's actually in the field, he does very very well for himself. So it's a it's a stupid idea to fight a battle you know you won't win. Right. But it also comes across as kind of craven because you're like, dude, just hold still so I can crush you, and he just won't. Yeah. Um, and then when they invade his land, he gets enough guys together and then attacks them and gets them out of his land. Uh, so since he's built up a little bit of a reputation here, uh, a Greek city in southern Italy reaches out to him for help. Mm -hmm. uh, this city is right at the base of Italy where, like, the heel meets the toe of the thing. It's right there. Oh, yes. Ooh. And the city is called Tarentum. Uh, or Tarentum. Tarentum. Turned them. Uh, tarantula. Now, this is a, a Greek city, so, like, the Greeks would, like, travel around and they'd colonize places. So, like, okay. Carthage was a Greek city originally. Uh, they have colonies in the Levant and all the way out in Persia now because of Alexander's conquests. Uh, I think they have a city, they have a city for sure in India at this time, which is, I think, Bucephalophus? Bucephalus, which is named after Alexander's horse, Bucephalus. The ox head. I knew I was going oh, to find a reason to mention him. I knew I was going to find a reason to mention him. So I forgot to name Alexander's horse. He loved this horse so much. Had him for 30 years. And when the horse finally died of old age, he's like, I miss my horse. Name that city after him. And they did. Wow. <laughs> I don't I don't know what the city is nowadays, but it okay. was the site of a city. Um, <laughs> dude loved his horse. I mean, it carried him through battle. and I mean, he probably talked to it a lot. Probably was his buddy. Yeah. And then it died. Oh, poor, Bucef sad. poor Bucephalus. Yeah, this is his buddy. Okay. It's like losing 
you know, if you lose a dog, sure, that's sad. This yeah. is a horse you had for thirty years. Yeah, that's pretty impressive. Yeah, I'm sit um, after my dog. Yeah, and then, but also they fought together. Yeah, so it's like his best war buddy, <laughs> loyalist friend, dead. City named after. City named. That's pretty Done. cool. Uh, <laughs> I don't have any cities named after. I mean, that'd be great. Uh, so Tarentum is having problems with Rome. Rome is not yet like a world power. No. Uh, no. It is a small republic. Seven little hills. Yep. And it has branched out enough where it does control like its hills. It's, it's a republic at this point, okay. so it doesn't have kings anymore. It's on the rise, though. It's mm. beaten up a lot of the neighboring tribes and folded them into its growing lands. It owns a significant chunk of Italy. Uh, they've thrown off the, the, the kings that were in charge of them, and they're their own place, and they're on the rise. The Greeks see this as a bit of an issue. Mm -hmm. If the Romans grow much bigger, yeah. they'll be a threat to the whole Mediterranean. Yeah, we won't be the big and ones. Yes, the Greeks won't have... They're, they're like, mm, we don't want the Latins in charge, we want the Greeks in charge. Mm -hmm. So there's I hope colonies. we don't all grow up learning Latin-based languages. Oh, no. Oh, no. <laughs> but hey, people still speak Greek, That's and true. nobody speaks Latin. Aha. 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 Good job. Spoiler. Yeah. Spoiled all of classical history. Thanks, right. man. Sorry. Good job. Uh, so at this time, the Greeks have all of these colonies throughout the world uh, that they know of, you know, their known world. Mm -hmm. So uh, like modern-day Messina is a Greek settlement. Uh, they have stuff almost all the way to, like, France, like, southern France. Greeks do. The Greeks do. They have all these yeah. colonies. Um, and the, like, all the, the Italian countries, but specifically the Romans, are trying to fight this back because they're like, this is our land. And the Romans are constantly expanding. Like you said, they have their seven little hills. Yeah. Well, they want more than their seven little hills. Oh. That's not enough land. And they just keep, you know, folding other people into their kingdom. Or, sorry, republic. Tarentum has had a... There's, like, different versions of what happened. Uh, but basically, it seems like they were concerned the Romans were going to get, like, you belong to us now. Yeah. Right. And you are one city-state, and we are all of this Roman territory. Yeah, that does sound like a Roman thing to do. That does sound like a Roman thing to do. So they start looking for help. They need soldiers. Yep. So they find a guy with a lot of ambition. Pyrrhus. Pyrrhus. Now, Pyrrhus has the reputation of being very belligerent, mm -hmm. pretty good at war when he actually sh is involved. Okay. So they send for assistance from him. Now, this causes an actual problem within the city because half the people are like, if we call in a Greek king, and we're, they're, like a, they're a democracy, so they, they don't have a king. But they're like, if we call in a king, it's going to be just as bad as if the Romans take us over. We're going to have to deal with him being our king or the Romans running us, right. we won't be our own independent state. And one of the guys who's who's pushing this is like a local philosopher and nobleman, and he just wanders around pretending he's drunk all the time to show how awesome life is in the city. Look, guys, we have a lackadaisical, chill lifestyle, get drunk all day, party, no big deal. Who's this guy? Um, I want to get his job. <laughs> right? I feel <laughs> I'm close. <laughs> I think his name is Menon. Menon. Uh, M E N O N. I have to double check. Uh, I'm gonna look him up. He, he seems great. I like the cut of his I jib. I do too. He's <laughs> like, why would you guys want to fight anybody else and invite him into their country? Hey, man. <laughs> but he's secretly like sober during all this. Oh well. Because like for a lot of it, because he's got to maintain his brain. Like sure. he's got to he's got to have plans. Well, I guess that's where he and I differ. But he has. But everybody around him gets drunk. So you want to be that guy. He's, I want to be that guy's a, friend. You want to be his friend. God. Right. He's got the weight of the world weighing down sure. on him and stressing him out. But his no, buddies... I'm here for you, buddy. If you're part of the entourage, <laughs> yeah. you're having a good time. Yeah. So he wants to sell this idea, though, of, look at this. We have, we have theaters and we have amphitheaters for big speeches and stuff. We have uh, huge, lavish feasts and parties. We're it. doing really well as a society. The last thing we need is some stupid king coming in and running it like it's his, you know, Kingdom. home little place. <laughs> we don't want that. <coughs> don't you guys want to live free like this? And a bunch of people are like, yeah, sounds great to me. But. I bet that doesn't work. An equally large number of people, or probably more, 
are terrified that the Romans are going to march down south and just conquer their city. Yeah. And the Roman military at this point is turning into the Roman legion. They're well respected for their ability to fight. It's totally different than the Greek phalanx. They have a totally different fighting style. And these people are not prepared for that. They're one city-state that's pretty populous, but they're partiers, right? This is the part. This is a party city. Yeah. It's like if Oshkosh tried to go to war with like Milwaukee and Chicago at the same time. <laughs> Our international viewers don't. Know oh yeah, so do we have international uh, we viewers? We might. So, a small drunk party town. Yes. Of I don't know, like forty thousand people, versus a much larger drunk party town. <laughs> versus an army <laughs> of a million. And uh, if you don't know what Chicago is, it's a very big city. Shame on you. But the idea being, it's a small independent state. Yeah. Versus who just want to have a good time, and they man. Do, they just want it, to. It's a great concept. This town sounds fantastic. Like, it, and it's not like decadent and and wasteful. It seems like it, it also still functions. What town are we talking about? Uh, this is uh, Tarentum. Oh yeah. T a r e n t u m. Oh yeah, we have a picture and everything. Um, yeah. And it's, it's, so it's, these guys just want to have the life they're used to, which is what most people want, sure. is to maintain the life they have. The Romans, on the other hand, are like, man, right. they don't want that. They want that land, and they want that port, because it's in a pretty good chunk of land. It's right, like I said, right between the heel and the toe of the yeah, boot. Yeah. It's right in that little crux the there. The arch. It's a great spot for a port. Romans want that. Plus, if they control all of southern Italy, wonderful for them. So okay. there's all of this drama going on, and they're like, Pyrrhus, this guy's going to come in. So Maynon, the, the guy pretending to be the drunk, mm -hmm. he loses the debate. Like, he has a speech and everything, and the crowd's like, yeah, great! But the fearful people who are terrified of the Roman legions mm -hmm. marching in and possibly enslaving them, because the Romans are all about slavery, and just crushing other kingdoms, and then Romanizing them, because what the Romans will oftentimes do is they'll destroy, like, they'll depopulate a city. They'll take the people out of it and either put them in as slaves or bring them back to Rome and force them to live in Rome. And then they'll put Romans in that city. Yeah. So that in a couple of, they plan generationally. So that in a couple generations, the people they brought to Rome become Roman. And then their Roman way of living goes to all of these other cities. Right, right. It's brilliant. It's, I don't think, Moral in any way. No, it sounds uh, <laughs> sounds pretty horrible. Yeah, but like a parasite. It, it it right. Yes, it it's like a it's like a transfusion. It's like a blood mm -hmm. transfusion. But they take they take the old stuff out and then they put it in, but it gets diluted by being thrust into Rome, and then Rome's just like, yeah, you're part of us now. Yeah. So that all of like the cultures that were around them, there's not really much known about them. Like the Etruscans, we don't really know much about them. They were like a mystery civilization that lived at the same time. But they all got Romanized. They got destroyed, and then they got folded into Roman culture, and then Rome took all over. Right. It's a thing. Um, and the Greeks don't want that. They have their own culture that they're pretty we darn proud them, of, yeah. and they're like, we don't like this. Greece is the word, man. Yeah. So... They call in to Pyrrhus, finally, because after Menon does his speech, and the people who are terrified, they get to react. And they exile him from the city. They don't kill him. But they basically rise up and like, you're out. Your idea is stupid, Menon. We're not, <laughs> we're not a party city, and we'd rather have this certifiable badass come in with his mercenary army of professional soldiers and help us out than... Oh, we're just going to drink it, we'll be fine. Because we're not going to be fine. So Fear wins the day, and Pyrrhus is summoned. There are a couple versions of what happens with okay. Pyrrhus. Yeah. Uh, the large theory is, or the, the, the large and kind of consensus is that he pretty much rushes there. He doesn't wait for spring for better weather. I heard it was a party city, man. <laughs> he just wants to get there. Yeah. And they, this starts to create kind of a concept. This is the beginning of the idea of Greek mercenary armies being hired to do stuff. Okay. Uh, it's used by the Carthaginians and the Romans throughout their wars later in centuries later on. Uh, <clears throat> the Greeks at this time just really, really like to fight, and they're quite good at it. They make good soldiers because it's built into their society that adults train to fight, specifically adult males. The women probably know how to swing a sword, but they're not folded into the army. That's okay. not how things work. Um, 
<clears throat> so, Pyrrhus is kind of like the, the tip of the spear of this. He's the like beginning of kings going off to fight for foreign interests in the area. And it's interesting because they don't really say, like, we're going to pay you a bunch of money. They send him gifts and everything. But he probably sees this as an opportunity to take loot and spoils from anything he conquers. Yep. And then also getting to keep the land he conquers. Oh, yeah. So they basically <clears throat> open the door to a foreign conqueror and offer support. Yeah. Um, they promise him, like, 20,000 soldiers to help him out, a bunch of cavalry, all the supplies he could possibly want. And he's, like, salivating over this. He gets all of the kingdom on board. Epirus is just like, yes, let's do this. He's got guys volunteering left and right. Uh, one of the versions of it is that he sails with this huge army of like 40,000 guys, but he does it badly at the wrong time of the year, oh, okay. doesn't care, and he ends up swimming ashore in Rome, or oh, in Italy, no. with 2,000 men left. Hey. Oh, that's a lot. He loses the vast majority of his army. That's no. in the Mediterranean that can get rough, right? Yeah, it can get yeah. rough, um, especially between those two chunks of land. Yeah. So that's one version of it. What's more likely is he just didn't have a huge army to begin with and got there. Okay. Well, either way, somebody got wet. Either right? way, yep, it doesn't go terribly well. But he shows up with a smallish army, yeah. uh, and he's like, they, they make him like enter the city without an army at first and like basically discuss terms. Because they're like, we don't want you taking over. We don't want a tyrant king. We want... Yeah, we're not going to take over. Hold on. Just... Yep. Ah. Excuse me. Oh. You guys see my hat? The water's chilly. See my hat. It's just like the, the classic Greek helmet with the big horse hair flu, but it's just... Yep. Me. Hold on. Okay. We're better. Yeah. We're good. All right. Where's my Where's my sword? Uh, it's at go. the bottom of the lake. Crap. <laughs> Give me your sword. I don't look kingly. <laughs> Ah, I'm the king. So he shows up, though, with thousands of guys. Yep. Uh, and at first, things go really, really well. At first. <laughs> it seems to be the case. Yep. <laughs> uh, he establishes control of the city, sets up rules for his guys, because he's basically like, you guys are not allowed to drink with these people, because this is a party city. This is a party city. And I know. That's crap for soldiering. And that's why we are here. <laughs> We're here to soldier. Uh. The party comes after the soldier. I signed up for the party city part. Doesn't matter what you signed up for. I'm Sir. Okay. Yep, don't care. We get I wish loot. I, I wish I had drowned. <laughs> <laughs> you can always go back in this the water. This is no fun. Why don't you go back in the water, hmm. then? There you go. It's hmm. fine. Yeah. I could have stepped at Crete. Yeah, you could have. <laughs> if you'd sailed the wrong oh, freaking direction. Some island, I'm sure. There was some <laughs> island on the way. Yeah. Yep. Could have stopped at a little rocky island. Yep. I'm sure there was one. All right. Yeah, that's a great idea. Have fun with that. Okay. No one's stopping you. All right. So they got to oh. fight. All right. So he starts setting up his guys as like a garrison. And then once he has control of this city, he changes the rules for the rest of the city. Nice. You people all party too much. Yeah. He shuts down all feasts, mm. the theater, mm. closes the forum, mm. shuts down uh, basically any kind of vice within the city, and then makes it mandatory for everyone to begin military training. Any physically capable male who has not found training to be a soldier is put to death. He's quickly gone from my okay list to my not okay yeah, list. Yeah, it's not great. Because he, he says, you guys called me to war, I'm not doing all the fighting on my own. You're helping. But. No buts. You're training. He actually whips these guys into shape into a pretty formidable army. Mm, sure. I'm yeah. sure the theater folk loved it. Yeah, they were over the moon. Mm -hmm. They didn't have any other option. <laughs> uh, so, yeah, he's, he, he's actually listed uh, as part of his titles as the Tyrant of Tarentum. Mm -hmm. that's, that's the actual official title he gets is the Tyrant. Because uh, at the time, tyrant wasn't considered the worst thing in the world. That just meant sole dictator, ruler. Dictator was also an okay term. But <laughs> this is probably why tyrant has a negative connotation. Okay. Because of this. He's a jerk. Yeah. <laughs> so, yeah, he takes away all the fun. He sucks all the fun out of the city. It goes from a lively, bright, colorful place to, I just imagine, shades of gray and lots of bronze because that's their armor. Sure. And they're going to go stab everything. Yeah. Yay. And then he immediately plans... To fight the Romans. Sure, why not? Yep. What else are we doing? Well, that's the plan. The Romans and the Romans are like, oh crap, this guy's for real. Uh, and he's got a bit of a reputation. Well, um, run away. Okay. So the Romans that are nearby try to run. 
And then the locals catch them in an ambush. But because the Romans have local prisoners, they literally hide behind them. Oh. <laughs> and the guys who ambush them go, oh, no, I know that guy. And they let him leave. Okay, they're good. <laughs> they're not monsters. Okay, so they go back to Rome. And they're like, so um, the stuff in the south is getting bad fast. Yeah. We need to handle this. This Pyrrhus guy is for real. And he's made an army that's pretty impressive. So the Romans do the Roman thing. They call the Senate to order, raise an army, send off one of the consuls to lead it. Over the next, what is it, uh, five years, so this starts in 280 B.C., uh, this is the start of what they call the Pyrrhic War. There is the Battle of Heraclea, which is their first major engagement, and Pyrrhus wins pretty handily. Uh, apparently, he, he brought war elephants with him, well, that's why the ships sank. <laughs> Which is also why I don't think as many ships sank as they claim. Because if he showed up with just a crappy little army, how did he get the war elephants there? <laughs> and the war elephants are from the Greek world. The Romans are not used to Greek, to war elephants at all. Yeah. They don't have like the huge spears. They don't fight like that. Their spears are much shorter. Uh, their lines are not as deep. And they're not prepared for a, a freaking giant death monster that is just pure rage and basically a tank Man. to come charging at them. How do they get those on a boat? Carefully. I think you have like two in a boat tops. <laughs> yeah, okay. And it's just them. And you have guys whose entire life is to keep the elephant happy <laughs> and calm. Mm. Maybe. Could be a good gig. <laughs> could be a good gig. Don't worry, elephant. As soon as well, we get to Party City, it's going to be all right. It's kind of like how uh, knights, when they went to war, they had grooms, mm -hmm. several of them usually, to take care of the horse because this was a beast of death. Yeah. And also your transportation. So you wanted to take really good care of it. Sure. Yeah. Taking care of an elephant, that's key. Yeah. Like, you got to keep him alive and happy. So unlike like at the Battle of Galgamela, which we just talked about, where the elephants were like tired and they sucked and they didn't do anything, this guy actually knows how to use war elephants. Yeah. Um, he might have actually rode one of them into battle, too. Um, the versions of this are different. Okay. Apparently, the elephants did so much damage that the Romans almost lost their entire army just from these, like, 20 war elephants rampaging through their lines. And if one of the... Ele and in one of the, the versions of this, uh, the elephants, like, do, like, their trumpet sound, and it kind of makes the rest of the army pause because they're like, is the elephant okay? Yeah. Is it and they don't want their elephants rampaging through their own lines, so they stop the fighting. <laughs> And that might have spared the majority of the Romans who would have died. Oh. It, like, it was a total rout. They had no... They're like, what the hell is this giant death thing coming? What, he's kind of cute with the floppy ears. Oh, God, he just flattened 50 <laughs> people. Ew. And they knew how to get the elephants, like, worked up in the battle. So, and then they had guys on top of them shooting at people with bows and arrows. So, just, it's a tank. Sounds like fun for everyone except the elephant. Yep. Although they did put armor on the elephant, yeah, maybe the elephant's kind of happy and safe. Actually, and yeah. also, I think like poking an elephant with a spear is probably like the equivalent of rubbing like a, a pointed stick against oh, a sure. person. It's yeah. not going to do a ton of damage. Okay. And then you get then you get more food. But yeah, using beasts of war is kind of you know, yeah, yeah. Yeah. If you're an animal lover, none of that's okay. Don't do it, kids. Don't do it. <laughs> that's why we don't use uh, horses in the military anymore. So we should just have party cities. Sorry. Yeah, we I'm should have dance-offs and sing-offs and stuff. I'm not going to let this go. No, that's All fine. Right. Party City. Keep going. Party City sounds great. Dance-offs. Like break-dancing contests. Yeah. Yep. I think it's a great idea. <laughs> Having acting troops sort sure. out disputes. Yeah. Our actors are better than yours. Calm down. I'm for it. <laughs> yeah, but everyone's got swords. All right, Yep, yep, <laughs> yep, 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 yep. Every, every critic's got a sword. Every critic's <laughs> got a sword. We didn't like your performance. Ah! I'm working on it. So he wins really handily at Heraclea. Yeah. Go, Pyrrhus! You Woo. crushed it, man! Oh. And he follows up with uh, the Battle of Asculum. Now, uh, Asculum didn't go as well. He won, maybe. Okay. I think it was Asculum. Uh, it was either Asculum or Beneventum. Sounds like Pyrrhus has the most ties. Oh, it's, it's, Ascul of it's, Asc any, it's Asculum. Uh, warrior we've talked about. <laughs> yes, in this battle. There's three different versions of what happened. Mm -hmm. One says he won. Yep. One says he lost. Oh. And the other guy says it was a tie. Well, there you go. So, average, sure. we go with tie. Sure. Uh, 
He is quoted as saying, by the guy who said it was a tie, if we're victorious in one more battle with the Romans, we shall be utterly ruined. That's okay. how many guys they lost in this wow. battle. Like, right. they won, but... But at eh, what cost? But at what cost? Um, <laughs> so they didn't do well there. Uh, he gets kind of frustrated fighting the Romans, so he goes into Sicily and fights the Carthaginians now. Because okay. they got pulled into the war. The Romans at this time are friends with Carthage. This is before Hannibal. Um, so the Carthaginians are like, yeah, we'll fight him. And he's like, ooh, this is easier. I'm going to yeah. conquer some land and steal some stuff. So he ends up conquering Sicily and becoming the king of Sicily hey. for a couple of years. Okay. Well, then he wants to go back to Rome and pursue the fight because basically he's kicked out of Sicily. Okay. He's not, he, he doesn't earn a ton of friends. He's considered like benevolent in victory and benevolent as a king. But because he fights so much, people get battle fatigue. Yeah. Um, and because of this, it's also stirred up the Samnites who have been fighting against the Romans for a long time. And I think um, it made the Romans kind of beat up on them because they lost like their allies. So they have it in for Pyrrhus and the Romans and they fight Pyrrhus. He defeats them, kills like 10,000 of them, on his way back into Rome. And that's at uh, the Battle of Messina. Uh, and then he gets back into Rome and fights at Beneventum. Now this one, he loses. He loses it badly enough that he's like, all right, I'm done here. <laughs> I don't want to do this anymore. <laughs> in total, for over the five years of battle... Now, bear in mind, this, this is what we'll get in. I, he doesn't constantly get new troops, but Rome is a republic <coughs> that can constantly replenish its numbers. Oh, so okay. he can't afford to have big losses. Right. So he's winning, and apparently his tactics are pretty solid, but he's usually dealing with huge numbers of soldiers and constant loss and attrition. He can't win a war of attrition. He can win battle after battle after battle, Yeah. but he can't replenish his numbers like the Romans can. Even if he's relying on Tarentum, that's a Greek colony. That's one city. And they're kind of sick of him. Yeah. Like most of these people are like, okay, this wasn't that well, great. I was sick of him from day one. Yep. Uh, he's he's winning battles and he's claiming territory because not these are the big battles, but he's also like taking cities throughout all of this. So he's actually doing much better than it seems just by these large battles. Okay. It's all the small battles that he's winning. He's winning all these skirmishes. He's taking all this land. He's basically got like the southern chunk of Italy and Sicily under his control, um, allegedly for the Greek colonies and city-states in the area. But he loses this final battle, and his total troops lost are between eighteen and 27,000, depending on the sources, guys. Yeah. Yeah. And the Romans lose between 23,000 and 31,000. So the Romans, in every estimation, lose more, but they can afford to lose more. He can't. Yeah. So he goes home eventually. Okay. He goes back to Epirus, which has been taken, uh, but it, not not over, but it was under left under the protection of Ptolemy, his old... Uh, his old buddy? His old buddy. Ptolemy does not try to keep it from him. He says, all right, your kingdom is safe. Have it back. How's your wife? Yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. So one of the problems that he ran into during his wars with Demetrius was... His wife left him because she, re his second wife left him because she refused to live amongst barbarians in court. Well. So she took her. Hit the road, baby. She left and took her dowry with her, which was oh. a kingdom. <laughs> which was Sicily. Okay. And she gave it to her new husband. Um, so now, uh, he gets recruited by Sparta, by a king of, uh, a prince of Sparta who is not popular and was basically driven out of the city, to go take Sparta. And he's like, ooh, if I control Sparta, I control all the Peloponnesian Peninsula. Yeah. And he goes to Sparta, and then it sucks, because they're Spartans, and they're really tough fighters. So he loses, and then he leaves. Yep. Um, his son dies. Sorry. And he, before he can really mourn him, he's called off to deal with uh, a dispute in Argos. Ooh. Now, while he's called to deal with it, another guy is called to deal with it. A guy named Antigonus. Hey. He's Demetrius's son. Okay. They've fought before during those six or those eight years of wars. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He fought and beat Antigonus. This is, this is the grandson of the first Antigonus. Okay. So there's Antigonus, Demetrius, Antigonus again. Got it. 
And that guy's running the show now for Demetrius. He's marching to Argos with an army as well, because he's going to sort out the problem. They hate each other. <laughs> to try to get into Argos first, he rushes his army at Pyrrhus under stealth. They get inside and realize the place is full of Macedonians Ooh. and Thessalians who hate him. They're the army of this Antigonus family, the Antigone family. <laughs> it causes this huge street brawl. Like, this is, there's no organization. It's just back to back to back battles for every corner, every alley, every direction. It's this just used to be a nice all, city. This was a nice city. <laughs> well, the Argives are famous for, they're brawlers, they're fighters. These, these, these are the Argonauts. These are yeah, tough yeah. people. He's fighting an Argive soldier outside of the guy's own house. Okay. And his mom is on the roof watching her baby boy fight a king. Ooh. She literally grabs like a terracotta roof tile and biffs Pyrrhus in the skull with it. Good. Either killing him immediately or knocking him out cold. Yeah. So I'm picturing this little old lady like, you leave my son alone! Piff! Down he goes. A Macedonian soldier named uh, Zopirus, he gets a name because he decapitates <laughs> the unconscious or maybe dead king. Okay. Ending Pyrrhus's reign of pseudo-terror hey. and constant warfare. And Serves him right for shutting down Party City. Stop <laughs> messing with Party City. Uh, now, Antigonus <laughs> uh, respected Pyrrhus as a great general okay. and... Uh, Arrival, so he has him cremated with all honors and dignity and respect. That's a very yeah. common thing at the time. Sure. Um, and that is the end of Pyrrhus. Now, Pyrrhus goes down in history. Uh, Hannibal Barca, the famous guy who fought against Rome, the famous Hannibal and his elephants and the all elephants. that guy, uh, he had a huge amount of respect for Pyrrhus and considered him the greatest general apart from Alexander. Okay. Up, up until then. Was it because he got elephants from him? It might have been. I think he appreciated his his kind of like his spirit of battle. Like he he had ideas and he he went with it. His tactics were really good. His strategies were really good. He just didn't always have the numbers and he didn't have much patience. Yeah. Um, and unlike Alexander, who had that brilliant tactical and strategic mind, it seems like his his tactics are great, but his overall strategy wasn't always brilliant. And he wasn't great at diplomacy. Yep. He was considered a benevolent king who resolved a bunch of issues, but he also would kill off potential threats. He would mm. have people assassinated. Uh, if, if there was a family that could cause him problems <laughs> later on, he'd send them to a country where he knew they wouldn't survive. It's diplomacy in its own diplomacy way. Diplomacy in its own way. So, But he was, you know... He, he, the second Demetrius was like in a different city, he ambushed his country, and then that caused eight years of unnecessary warfare. Um, whether or not that was because he's mad at the guy for selling him off as a hostage or whatever, uh, that's kind of lost to history. But then he goes off and he's like, I'm going to be a famous king general guy and fight for these other people. It seems like he just really liked fighting. He was kind of a Richard the Lionheart, but less of a monster. Well, then he deserves to die at the and hands of an old lady. Then he, <laughs> like Richard the Lionheart later, dies in a really stupid way from some random not-soldier beaming him with a missile weapon, and right. down he goes. I think that's karma. I think so, too. Now, Pyrrhus gets respect as being this great general, which is questionable because it's like he, he won all these battles and he would win all these minor engagements, but yeah. he could never finish the deal. So, like... He really hammered on the Romans, which delayed the Romans conquering everything. But in the end, the Romans still did quite well. If he put the final nail in the coffin, Rome might have never been ascendant. Well, uh, he well, also Rome was destined to is be the reason why we have the expression a pyrrhic victory. Oh. A pyrrhic victory is when you fight and you win, but you basically lost so much in the exchange that well, what's the point? Yeah, right. That's like having an argument with somebody and then they were your friend and you and win the know. argument but you lost the friend in the exchange. That's uh, and, and interestingly enough, as much as Hannibal respected him, he had Pyrrhic victories all the time. Uh, it wasn't that he lost guys, but like he'd crush Roman armies and just even though he could crush their armies in the field, he couldn't take Rome itself. So it was kind of considered like a Pyrrhic victory. Okay. Of, yeah, you won, but... But at what cost? But at what cost? Or 
were you able to actually finish it? You won the battle, but you lost the war kind of a thing. Because like we saw, he won a bunch of battles, but he still lost the Pyrrhic Wars, he lost Sicily, he lost all of his land, and he ended up with just Pyrrhus, and then he died. And that's the story of Epirus. What was that, the end? That's it. Oh, okay. That's it. I finished almost on time. I'm almost on time. Almost on time. I... <laughs> Yep. What more to add? Nope, that's no? it. That's it. That was wonderful. Don't be a warmongering jerk. I think that's that seems to be a history I guess. lesson. Seems to be the history lesson. It worked out for one guy so far. <laughs> Alexander. He didn't die in battle. He won every battle and then he just got sick. Well, that was the life of Pyrrhus. Yep. Started on October eighth. Yep. All the way to when he died. All the way until he died. Next week we're gonna be we'll, we'll do the reverse. We're gonna yep. start where the guy died and then work our way backwards. <laughs> work our way back. Well, we'll, we'll, we'll say when we'll he died out. and then we'll start with. His uh, life. So next week is uh, the death of Jan Ziska. Yes. Uh, in 1424. Yep. I don't know what country this is. In sounds Middle European. I think it's modern day Czechoslovakia. I think he's from Prague. That's yeah, in the middle of Europe. Yeah. Middle All of right. Europe. <laughs> uh, so tune in uh, there. If you have any uh, questions, questions or notes, questions. corrections questions or notes, notes or comments, put those in there. Yep. Subscribe, like, share, do all the things. Yep. Uh, and uh, we'll be back next week. Yeah. For this week in history. Bye, so guys. Say goodbye, Will. Bye. Mm-hmm.